Hey there, it's Stefan from Performance Fuel Injection here. I uh, just wanted to do a video today on uh, the Siemens DECA 60 pound shorty injectors that came to us. Uh, basically this video is just going to show you how much potential there is for deviation in flow when you're purchasing a uh, off the shelf set uh, random eight injectors from a supplier that didn't flow match them, which is how a lot of injectors are purchased. Uh, it's only becoming maybe more, more prevalent now uh, to see retailers selling flow match sets. Um, so this is not a flow match set. Basically we're going to do some testing, static flow testing and dynamic flow testing at 12 millisecond, 6 millisecond and 3 millisecond pulse widths. Uh, you're going to see the most deviation at the 3 millisecond if they're not flow matched. Uh, 12 millisecond you're probably not going to see too much. That's where injectors usually start to come together. Um, so the first test we're going to run is a static test. We're going to do four at a time just to keep the uh, frequency in the rail down to keep fuel pressure steady uh, for some more accurate results. So we're going to rack these down in the volume tubes and we're going to start our testing. Okay, so this will be a 10 second test at three bar. Uh, just enough to fill the tube so we can get a, get a result here that we can compare. There's the first four, we're going to switch it over and do the next four. Okay, we got the next four racked here. I'll post all of the uh, flow deviation results in the uh, description for this video just because I don't want to whip my calculator out and start doing everything as you're waiting on me. So there's the static flow results, you can see there's some deviation there, which is not uncommon. So we'll switch it over and we'll do the 12 millisecond test now. Okay, so 12 millisecond test. Uh, this is at uh, 5,000 RPM, that's just the frequency. Uh, and this will be a 15 second test, which should fill the tubes enough to give us a result. So ideally you don't want to see too much deviation at this pulse width. Okay, we've got the next four racked. So there's a little bit of deviation there. We're going to move on to the 6 millisecond test now. Okay, 6 millisecond test ready to go here. Again, 4 at a time. This will be a 25 second test just as the pulse width decreases. And takes more time to fill the tubes. Okay, we'll switch over and do the other four now. And the last test we're going to perform is the 3 millisecond test and I'm actually going to do all 8 at the same time just because the, uh, the uh, pulse width is so short that it doesn't actually cause too much more frequency disruption in the rail. What you're seeing here is just the end of the first 30 second test for the 3 millisecond pulse width. You have to run it twice just so you can fill the tubes enough to see the deviation properly. I thought I'd spare you the first 25 seconds of the first test. So this is where you should see the most deviation and flow and you can kind of already see it happening with uh, tubes number 4 and 6 being the highest. 
flow match set, ideally you want to see under 3% deviation in flow. This one is clearly over that. Um, so this is, this is simulating an idle pulse width in a lot of applications and uh, that, that might be why you hear um, it's difficult to tune idle with larger injectors, uh, but it's, it's typically not the case when you have a nice flow match set. So again, I'll post all of the deviation results at the different uh, testing pulse widths in the description. Thanks for watching.